Hey, um, I'm Blaine Remick. Today I'll be giving you a review of a book as essentially the timeline of Google. The book can be seen right here. It's called The Search, How Google and Travels Rewrote the Rules of Business and Transform Our Culture by John Mattel. And there's a very interesting quote on the first page of the book that I think everyone should hear. The Library of Alexandria was the first time humanity attempted to bring the sum total of human knowledge together in one place at one time. Our latest attempt, Google. And this kind of puts Google in perspective. I don't really think most people realize um, how much Google has control over and how much they do. I didn't really either until I read the book and it was just kind of interesting. Um, first a little about the author. Um, he's a visiting professor at uh, Berkeley. He is one of the founders of Wired Magazine, the founder of the Industry Standard Magazine, and has only written one book, um, The Search. He's a pretty credible guy. I also found out he had a pretty wild attitude. Uh, when I googled him to find out information on him, the first three pictures were just him flying the little finger to the cameras. So <laughs> he must be kind of a wild guy. I kind of broke the book up into three sections um, to, that go with the business cycle, which are birth, growth, maturity, and death, which of course, death hasn't hit Google yet. Um, Google was born out of Stanford. Larry Page and Sergey Brin are the founders of Google. Uh, they were both accepted to the Graduate School of Computer Science at Stanford. Brin was supposed to be Page's sort of mentor because he was older and had been there longer, and to get some, his, some of his stipend money, he had to show freshmen around town. Um, Page picked a doctoral thesis to deal with the World Wide Web because it was relatively new at the time, and he thought it would be a way to get through his painful thesis he had to write. He wasn't looking forward to it. Uh, he picked a subject he called back rubbing, which took links and went backwards instead of forwards, which nobody had really done yet. So instead of looking at links to go to new pages, he looked at links to take you to the pages that brought you to where you were, which kind of is how search works. Um, they didn't really realize the opportunity for business. They never thought that Google was going to happen. It was just a way to get their, their degrees done and not have to deal with school anymore. And there's actually a funny story. When they first met each other, they thought the other one was kind of arrogant and obnoxious. So they didn't like each other and they didn't talk to each other. And then they got assigned to work on this project together and they weren't particularly happy about it. But later they overcame their differences, obviously. They realized they might have a company on their hands when people at Stanford were using Google daily to find stuff about classes and on the web. So they set up a meeting with um, Andy Bolkenstein here. and they were kind of startled. They pitched their idea for a business and he said, well, $100,000 due, and they just stared at him. And he said, what, 250, 500? What do you need? And they said, 100 will work. And so he wrote him a check for $100,000 and they didn't want, he didn't want to make the check out to an individual, so he said, what's your company's name? And they said, Google. Google didn't exist yet. So they went and made a company and a bank account and deposited the money. And then they went to their favorite place to eat, Burger King, they actually celebrated multiple times by going to Burger King even when they were millionaires, which I thought was kind of weird. <coughs> um, okay, um, Google started growing um, slowly at first. Just Stanford people were using it. Um, professors started using it. Stanford agreed to let Google use its servers, and that is where Google was started, on the Stanford servers. Um, here they explained the main aspects of their search. The first main aspect is the crawler, which goes through every website and gets every word out of it and indexes the words. So of course they ran out of server space. And then they took some of that $100,000 and just bought servers. And Paige actually had to move out of his dorm room because he couldn't fit anything in there. It was full of computer equipment. And so he was staying at a friend's house, Susan, and they started hiring people and they were just hiring engineers and not paying them very much, but it was enough money to kind of get by and you could work really close to campus, so people were doing it. Eventually they had eight employees, and then they moved to Palo Alto, California when they got more startup money. And it was shortly after this they tried to sell the company for $100,000 and they got laughed at. Uh, nobody would buy it, Yahoo didn't want it. Um, Alta Vista laughed at them, which is eventually the company they put to ruins. So they kind of got the last laugh. Um, the company eventually got so big that they couldn't really run it anymore. Um, they started to hire up management. They sold CEOs from other companies. Um, once Google got hot, everyone wanted to work there. 
They also did not want to go public. They liked having their own business in with it themselves. And decisions were made by Brand and by Page. You could come up with an idea and that was good, but they had the final say. There was no board of directors to deal with it was them. And right before they went public, they came up with an interesting business model. All the engineers they hired were to spend half their time developing new software with Google's money. So they went and worked on their own projects and did whatever they wanted. And at the end, if Google thought this was a good invention, they bought it for a couple million dollars. And then both parties could benefit. The engineers could retire if they really wanted to or keep working or go and try and start a business. And then Google could take it, put it on their website, and let their users use it and get more feedback, um, more visitors to their website, and then grow bigger and bigger. And actually, um, if you've ever looked at the more functions on Google, they have Google Scholar and Finance. That's how some of those were created by some of the engineers there, and then they just purchased the rights to those. So Google is just grew out of control initially. Um, their stocks were first sold for $85, and within a couple of months jumped up to 213 People made millions off it when they got uh, the first stock options. It was a rather large deal. Um, so Google now has a very stable base. They're getting into new markets. And um, so it kind of brought the question, can Google die? They get criticized for some things, um, not very many. One thing that I found is there are a lot of small businesses that will be in the organic search results for Google, and then they will change their algorithm, which is the way their sites are indexed. And they'll go from number one on the organic search results down to page 100 or 200 or 500, and then they'll go bankrupt in a couple of months. So it's actually put a lot of businesses into bankruptcy without even trying. Also, the Patriot Act is a rather large deal. Um, pretty much, if Google has information and the government wants it, they have to give it to them, and it's illegal for Google to tell you, hey, we gave everything we know about you to the government. And they also ran into a privacy issue when people would send emails through Google, <coughs> and if you sent, say, a recipe for apple pie to somebody, there would be links for apple pies on the side, so people were very worried that, that all their emails were being backed up and read and gave to the government, which they claim isn't the case, but even if it was, it would be illegal for them to tell. So. Google has pretty much grown incredibly, and the book was pretty interesting, and so I looked up some reviews on it. The first one was T.D. Wilson. Um, he has taught at multiple universities. He created an IT system for British police. He seemed like he had a pretty knowledgeable background. He called the talent internet, internet journalist, which makes sense. He's written far more articles uh, than he has books, obviously. He's only written one, but he commonly has articles in newspapers and different magazines. He also talks about how Google transformed our culture, which I didn't really realize until I read his review, which makes sense. Um, I've grown up using Google my whole life, but 20 years ago before it was invented, you'd have to get out a phone book or call somebody or try and drive around and get directions. Um, and he just thought Google was, people see Google as evil because they know everything about you. Everything's stored on there, your searches are stored. You can Google yourself and get your picture, which is where I got that picture for my evaluation later. I actually got it off Google. Um, the next one is Peter Hahn. He has taught at a couple of universities as well and has written in multiple IT books and been cited. He calls our culture now Google culture. We want it now but needed it yesterday and Google allows this. Uh, I'm currently an, an economist intern and when we got Google Earth they would quit sending people out to different states like Colorado and Washington and we would do everything on Google Earth. So they said it saved countless hours and money, and they can fund projects better now because they don't have to allow so much for labor just to travel. Um, personally, myself, I gave it three out of five stars. It was okay, but not great. The attention to detail was extremely frustrating. He would mention an idea and then go into depth about it for 20 pages when it didn't really pertain to Google at all. I know it talks about their rivals, but he would just go off about an idea. I know he talked about the businesses he's tried to start multiple times, so it kind of seemed like he was trying to direct me towards his websites every once in a while. So overall, it was good. If you're a technical person, it's worth reading, but if you don't really care, I mean, you can just go to Google and look up anything you want anyway. You don't really know why it works or how it works. It just does. Um, the audience would be people with moderate technology use, computer knowledge, and some business knowledge. If you're extremely computer savvy, this book would just bore you to death. I found this stuff in there very basic, and I don't really know that much about computers, so that's why the main reason I thought it was boring. 
Um, for clarity, he's easy to understand, but he does go off on multiple tangents, which kind of mixed together and make you wonder what he's really talking about. And the usefulness and accuracy of the information, he used multiple quotes from CEOs, the people who own Google, um, different people in the valley. It just seemed that all of his information was backed up. And also he used stuff from uh, public statements from Google after they became public. So, I mean, they would have been audited if that information wasn't correct. So I found it to be very uh, accurate. And the creating a story aspect of the book, for mine, was fairly easy and already been pointed out. They created a useful search engine, multiple software applications, and then there's more inventions yet to come, I'm sure, as their engineers are still working on new stuff. Things they've destroyed, Yellow Pages, nobody really uses a phone book anymore, even yellowpages.com, and most people just can Google anything they want, even get turn-by-turn -turn directions. Um, Alta Vista, which is funny, they wouldn't buy Google, and now Alta Vista has 3% of the search engine market, I think, and Google has over half. And thousands of small businesses. There was countless examples in the book. There's just too many to name. There's enough to write the search to. I would wager. Um, and so that was pretty much the outline of the book. And those are my sources. So if you have any questions, I'll answer those now.